ID8 BIM link lets you pull data from an Autodesk Revit file into Excel for editing and then push it back into Revit with equal ease. This short video demonstrates just one of the many ways BIM link can be used to enrich your building information model. Hello, and my name is Lana, and I'm one of the MEP application specialists here at ID8 Incorporated. One of the larger issues facing MEP engineers and the implementation of Revit are schedules. How do they get the information they need from Revit to fill out the schedules? One option is to modify the families inside the project. This will get you all the information you need to complete the schedules, but it may be cost prohibitive. What if that equipment is project specific? Are there Revit users inside the firm that have the time and the skill to modify or create these families? There are families that have been created by the manufacturer or families that are downloadable from share sites such as Autodesk Seek, but will they have all the information required as we see on the schedule on the screen? You'll notice there are yes, no questions. These are very labor intensive for a family developer and a Revit user. Also, there may be team members that are not Revit savvy, but they need access to the schedules. Both of these issues can be solved with ID8 BIM Link. Here you see a sample model. You'll notice there is a smoke damper and a generic fire damper placed in for example only. But you'll notice when we look at the properties and we scroll down, there is no yes, no parameters as we saw in the previous schedule. As we scroll down, there is no yes, no to complete that schedule as we would need. And even in the generic, we also have that same problem. How do we add these yes, no open and closed parameters? We can do so with key schedules and BIM link. You'll see that I've created a duck schedule already. And there is information that we had on our previous schedule that is missing from this schedule. I'm going to make a key schedule now. So I'm going to go up here to schedules and quantities, come down to duct accessories and click on schedule keys. I'm going to capitalize the word duct just so that it is easier for me to find the information that is specific to my schedule keys. At this point, I am basically creating the parameters that will be filled out. So you see a key name it already exists in schedule fields. I need now to add four parameters that will match what the schedule you saw previously needs. So I go to add parameter and I'm going to keep my cap locks on so I can distinguish my parameter data. So we're going to put commandable in here. Again, we're going to leave it as common, but we're also going to come down here and change it to a yes, no parameter, and we're going to leave it grouped up as other. Again, this time, cells fail safe position on, and then we can turn that to yes, no, leave it in other. Again, yes, no parameter, other. And then we'll just do a quantity. How is that? Change it to text, change it back to other, click OK. Here they all are. They're capitalized, so they are easier to distinguish from the standard out of the box. So I click OK. I will simply add in here five new rows. At this point, I'm going to turn to BIM link, but first I need to go back to a floor plan. So control tab, back to my floor plan, up into my add ends tab, and here is the BIM link button. From this point, I'm going to click the create new link. And we're going to come down to the bottom here where it says key schedule. Click the radial button and you'll see the duct accessory style. If I wish to rename it to follow the protocol so I can find it with my caps, I simply rename at this location. As I add the properties over, you'll notice in a linked preview, you'll be seeing what we are getting and the position the information is placed in. At this point, I'm going to click OK. Here is how it will look, and now I will export this. When I click export, it's going to ask me for a location. 
I have a location where I want this to place, be placed, so I click Save. We're going to let BIMLINK do its thing right here. Here we have the schedule, so I'm going to come in here and change the key names. SD1, FD1. Now again, this is simply for example. Once the file has been saved, we will migrate back to Revit, back into BIMLINK. Before you import the file, make sure you have closed your Excel spreadsheet. We'll import the file. You'll see the information has propagated back in. We'll import the issue. We will import the Excel. We'll close this. We'll come back down into our schedules and legends, and you'll see that this has already been filled out. We go back up to our docked accessory schedule. We go over to fields, and from here, we can now add in we can now add in duct accessory styles to the capitalized letters. Help in finding. We click OK. Now, I would also like to add all of the information that I had created inside of that schedule. You'll notice that when I click OK, the information isn't filled out. But as I come down and I choose which one of these duct accessory schedules that I had used prior, the information is then propagated across all of the parameters that I had made previously. This is just a simple example of the power of BIMLINK. Imagine your largest project and the cost savings of being able not only to recreate the schedule without the time needed to modify the family, but also being able to share that information with all the team members, even the non-Revit users. ID8 is an Autodesk authorized developer with 25 years of experience in software development with a specific focus on building information modeling. For complete information about ID8 BIMLINK, please visit our website at www.id8bimlink.com.